Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get rid of acne or imperfections in the skin as well as just touch up the overall complexion in a professional manner but also a pretty quick manner. Um, so you guys will see here this is the final image that I've produced and if I grab my zoom tool and go ahead and zoom in here you'll see her skin looks great. Very smooth complexion, very even and it doesn't look too artificial. Sometimes when you're fixing up a complexion, you can paint over too much of the realistic elements, uh, you know, parts of the skin, the uh, little subtle wrinkles, and just some of the pores that are found in the skin. So if I zoom in here, you can still see the pores here. I mean, they're minimized, but they're still there, so it looks uh, very realistic, not too photoshopped, not too artificial. So um, this is a great technique and it's pretty easy to do. But of course, before I get into that, I just want to show you guys my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. We've got tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as some merch that actually you guys voted on. And so this design is based on your votes. You can also check out our Udemy course, GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher. And of course, I'll include a link to this in the description, as well as links to our social media accounts and any other pertinent links. For this tutorial, I'll be using a combination of the mouse and the Wacom tablet. Now, if you don't have a Wacom tablet, you're not necessarily going to need it for this tutorial. You can very easily do all of this with your mouse. And I'll go over the techniques for doing it with both the mouse and the Wacom. Um, but if you do have a Wacom tablet and you're not sure how to install it, go ahead and watch the tutorial on our YouTube channel if you haven't already on how to install. And feel free, of course, to follow along using your Wacom tablet if you do have one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And I'm just starting with my mouse. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and open up this image. So I'll go to File Open. And once I've located the file location for this image, I'll go ahead and find that image, click on it, and click open. So I'm going to come over here to our layers panel and go ahead and hit this duplicate icon. And this step is kind of optional, but this just allows you to um, basically compare your results directly to the base image or just in case you mess something up, you can always revert back to that base image. Once we've done that, you can go ahead and hide that base image there. And make sure you're on that new layer. I just named this the skin complexion image layer by double clicking on it and typing it, uh, just deleting that JPEG part. So now what I'll do is I'll grab my zoom tool and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in close on one of the um, areas here of the complexion that has blemishes. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab my heel tool. And the heel tool basically uses an algorithm to take colors from a source area and then apply those colors to your destination area using um, the surrounding colors of your destination area. So in other words, um, I'll hit control on my keyboard and click and that area where you can see my brush is the source. And then I'll come over here to the blemish I wanna cover, that's the destination. And when I click, it's pulling colors from the source area but also using an algorithm to uh, take colors from the destination area surrounding that and uh, making that blend in. So it creates a really cool effect. You don't wanna do uh, too large of an area with this tool because you're gonna get something called daubing, which is sort of a fancy name for smearing. And uh, so that's definitely not something you want. So the heel tool is more of like a spot fix where you can go around and fix uh, different blemishes throughout the image like we're doing here. You can also use this to uh, fix wrinkles, but uh, for today's tutorial, I'm just gonna use this for fixing blemishes. So um, I can increase or decrease the size of my brush, which is going to increase or decrease the source area by using the left and right brackets on my keyboard, or you can also come over here and just drag the size slider. And what I like to do is hover this over the blemish and just make sure that this is um, going to be big enough to cover up that blemish. And I'm just gonna go throughout the image here and click on a source and then click on the destination. So click, control click on the source and then click on the destination. And I'm just gonna do this until a majority of the blemishes are covered up here. And this doesn't have to be perfect at first because we are going to fix the evenness of the complexion in the next step. So um, just generally try to cover up some of the major blemishes here and then we'll go back and fix the overall skin complexion or the evenness of the skin complexion. And I'm using the uh, mouse wheel to just move throughout this image here and find the various blemishes uh, on our subject's face. And I'll decrease the brush for this one here because this is a pretty small blemish. And this one's a larger blemish, so I'll go ahead and increase this again and hold control. 
You may need to test out the source location depending on how the final destination looks. Um, so if it doesn't quite fit in, then you just go ahead and try to find another source location nearby and then try it again. And then we've also got an eyelash here and we can use this heel tool to also get rid of that. So I'll just click and uh, so I clicked on the control clicked on the source and then clicked on that destination which was the eyelash and now that eyelash has disappeared. So I'll go ahead and zoom out here and see how this looks, see if we skipped anything major. And so I'll just take care of this one here on the neck real quick. So I'll go ahead and grab my zoom tool, hold control and click to zoom out. And now our complexion already looks a lot better and I can go ahead and uh, show that original and then hide the uh, layer we've been working on and you can see here's the before and here is the after. It might take a second depending on how fast your computer is and how large the image is, but now you can see that there's already an improvement in her complexion. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and even out the complexion and I don't want to overdo this because like I said before, if you use the airbrush tool, um, sometimes you can erase too much of what you know makes a face realistic, the pores um, or just uh, general shadows, things like that, and they can come off looking too porcelain or too artificial. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use uh, a different technique here other than the airbrush. We are going to incorporate some airbrush into this technique, but not in the way you guys are probably used to. And uh, so I'm going to start by, I'll go ahead and hide that original base layer that we had, and I will come over here to our skin complexion image and duplicate that layer. And you can double click on this and I'll just name this high pass and hit enter. All right, so once you've done that, go over to colors and choose invert. And that is going to invert our uh, colors on our image here. And this obviously looks completely weird, but we're gonna fix this. So we're gonna go over to mode and change this to vivid light. And this is kind of step two in our process, obviously still not quite there. But the last thing we're gonna do is go to filters, enhance, high pass. And you've got some settings here, including the standard deviation and the contrast. I have my standard deviation set to about 24. And then the contrast I found was better around one, the lower you have it, sort of the less effect it's gonna have on the overall complexion. And you'll see as it's rendering here, this is a fairly large image, that's why it's taking a little while, plus this is the uh, development version of GIMP, so it's a little slower than the final stable release version is gonna be. But you'll see the skin tone is definitely a lot softer, um, the complexion's a lot softer, and this is exactly the look we're going for. But once you've got the look that you want, you can go ahead and click OK and that's going to apply that high pass filter. And so now the skin complexion looks a lot better, but the issue is that um, that high pass filter is creating kind of that glow look throughout the entire image, not just the complexion. And so it's going over the hair here, as well as the eyes and the eyebrows and the lips. And all we want this effect to do is be on the complexion. So what we're gonna do to mitigate this is go ahead and click on that high pass layer, right click on it and go to add layer mask. And under Initialize Layer Mask 2, select Black, and that's going to add a uh, entirely hidden layer mask here. And this is where my Wacom tablet's gonna come in. And again, you guys can still use the mouse for this, but I'm gonna come over to my Airbrush tool and make sure my color is set to white. And I'm gonna set my opacity to 100 because I want the entire uh, high pass effect to come through on the parts that I'm painting over. And then I've got my flow down here set to about 30. And flow is the amount of color that's applied with the airbrush tool. And so the higher you set this flow amount, the more color is going to be uh, added through the airbrush. And I do want a softer overall finished product with the airbrush, so that's why I'm keeping the flow a little bit on the low side. But I'm increasing the size of the brush head, and you can either do this on your tablet or using the left or right brackets on your keyboard, or you can also use the size slider here. And I don't want this to be too large, but what I'm doing is I'm painting white directly on this black layer mask. So make sure your color here, your foreground color is set to white before you begin. And I'm just gonna go ahead and only paint over the parts of the skin and I'm leaving off the eyes and the eyebrows and the hair and anything that I don't want basically having that high pass filter that we created. And I'm just decreasing the brush depending on what area I'm in. So this part's a little more narrow as well as above the eyes here, so I can just decrease this brush as I work. And then I can increase it again. And you'll see that as I paint over parts of the complexion, 
um, it really starts to even out here and it looks really good. I'll just go ahead and increase that brush again. And because I have the opacity of the airbrush tool set to 100, you can paint over the same parts twice and it's not going to compound the effects or anything. If you have a lower opacity set and you paint over the same areas, then you might get some areas that come through a little more than uh, you might intend. And I'll go ahead and increase the brush size and then come down here to the neck as well. All right, so our subject's complexion is already looking a lot better. And if I hit Z on my keyboard or grab the zoom tool from the toolbox and just go ahead and zoom in on the complexion here, you'll see the really cool thing about this effect is that you still see the pores and some of the hairs, you know, the finer hairs and uh, just some other realistic parts of her complexion. So the overall result looks a lot better than um, you know, any kind of effect like a hard paintbrush um, where you're gonna accidentally erase all of those features. So I'll go ahead and unhide that original image and then hide those two layers we've been working on with the effects. And you can see here is the image before we applied anything. We've got a lot of blemishes and an eyelash here. And then here's after we applied. So all those blemishes are gone. The skin tone looks a lot more even. So it's a great final result and it's a technique that really doesn't take that much time to accomplish. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials, and you can enroll in our Udemy course, GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher, and of course I'll include a link to that and all links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.